Sometimes you meet people who seem to have a gift, a unique perspective and a solution to every problem. Their skills are sharp, man, and their minds are fluent. They captivate you and you wish you could be a bit more like them, or at least have some of that X factor they seem to possess. Sometimes they're game changers and sometimes they're leaders. And unfortunately, in some cases, you only find out about them after they're long gone and dead. They are masters in their field and boy do they inspire. Now, are they good teachers, you might ask? Not always, but one thing is for sure. They are definitely the best students and they don't leave anything to chance. A while back, I made a video on what makes a great teacher. And some of you suggested that I should also make a video on what makes a great student. And so here we are. Now I know that the literature on this subject is immense and if you're really into effective learning and how the brain receives and processes information and all of that, there are some great books that I've recommended in the caption of this video but for now I would like to talk a bit more from my own personal experience as a student and things that I've learned from other students that have inspired me to do better. So let's get into it, right? First of all, great students are fearless, even shameless and comfortable with failing. In fact, some of them enjoy failing and starting all over again. You see, when you're not afraid to fail, you're more likely to follow your curiosity, and it's that curiosity that's super important. Because to some extent, we're all naturally curious, but fear for failure and embarrassment and being wrong in a conversation just holds us back. What's even more important about curiosity is that it allows you to dig deep. When you dig deep, not only do you find more answers to your questions, but you're also more likely to be confronted with questions you didn't even think about. It's really important to understand that because if there is anything that gives you true power in any field, eventually, is the depth of your knowledge and not the breadth of it. And because you're passionate, you're always likely to chase the next piece of information and the next techniques and the next book and the next tip and the next trick and the next method. But when you push a little bit further on the things that you have accumulated, you find very quickly that you've only been scratching many surfaces without revealing the big picture. Now, so you might ask, well, what exactly are you doing when you're digging deeper? So you're constantly making observations, right? And based on those observations, you're making assumptions. And you test those assumptions and you evaluate them to see how they turn out. You compare ideas and put them against each other and let them sort of compete to see what answers or perhaps new perspectives they produce. Now, doing just that forces you to become more analytical. And that's exactly what great students are. They're continuously analyzing and rethinking concepts until they own the subject, like a piece of Play-Doh in the palm of their hands, and they can shape and mold and turn and twist and flip it in any way they want. And that is true mastery, right? When you can shape something to your desired outcome. Another interesting thing that happens during that process is how often you have to contradict yourself, which is another peculiar thing that great students do. You see, they're not bound by restrictive thinking. You're trying to find the best possible answer to your problem. And so you have to be aware of your bias and also be courageous enough to entertain ideas that may oppose your current discoveries and even be willing to completely dismiss them if that's necessary. Now you can imagine that going through a rigorous process like this keeps you open-minded and great students are. They know that. They understand this procedure deeply and that understanding gives them the next best quality, which is confidence. You need confidence. You see, you're always trying to test out your ideas. And in order to test your ideas, you need to get some conversations going. Even if it's conversations with yourself, you have to be comfortable with hard talk, because there's going to be hard talk. But not only that, you also need confidence if you want to compete. Just being competitive is not enough. You have to be able to back it up. And this is where it comes full circle. They're not afraid to fail. They follow through their curiosities. They dig deep in a methodical and analytical way. They don't mind contradiction, which keeps them open-minded. And that open-mindedness leads them through a series of valuable discoveries, which makes them more competent and so more confident. If they have leadership qualities and are good communicators, 
they tend to teach others, which is some sort of a double check for them to see if their ideas are valid and if they make sense. And so they navigate their ideas and thoughts through the cycle of feedback that they receive. Another thing that great students do is they have an infinite amount of questions. They can be annoying with it, aggressive, pushy, and really, 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 really annoying. They also don't cling to one teacher for all the answers, but instead they go out the world to discover it themselves because it's never enough, you see? It's so obsessive, always question after question, topic after topic, just like some of you are doing now. I know that some of you are absolutely smashing it, but some of you are holding back. And to those who are holding back, there is a big possibility that the great student within you is asleep. You just need to wake the motherfucker up. So let me put it this way, if you want to unleash the great student within you, start by asking why after why after why. Because this industry is desperate for great leaders, and it all starts with great students, and you can be one of them.